Although a recession in the European economy this year is unlikely, growth might be slow even in 2024. The analysts emphasized the reopening of the Chinese economy as one of the promising risks, but they also cautioned that monetary tightening would significantly impede development. It is still challenging to forecast how monetary tightening will affect events in the US and the evolution of inflation in the euro area, both of which remain highly unclear. The euro exchange rate and bond yields both follow the same pattern. Don't forget to subscribe to Wealth Dynamics to keep yourself updated with the latest happening and insights of the finance world. The forecast for Europe's economy has improved dramatically since last year, with a projected summer 2022 recession already beginning to ease in the fall. The outlook for the euro area continues to improve due to sharply lower energy costs. Although a severe recession is not anticipated this year, a mild recession cannot be ruled out because the economy has already begun to slow down. Additionally, economists at Austria's Erste Bank do not anticipate a recession this year. According to Rainer Singer, the GDP will expand by 0.6% in 2023 and 1.2% 1 in 2024. Of course declining energy prices are a boon for the outlook of the eurozone economy and should help to stabilize the economy, he noted. Ralph Salveen, an economist at Germany's Commerce Bank, also emphasized the dampening effect of rate increases. He believes that the economy will continue to be poor this year and that it will likely contract for two consecutive quarters, which would fit the standard definition of a recession. Commerce Bank anticipates that the real GDP of the euro region will remain flat this year on average. With growth reaching 0.3% every quarter in July, September and then decreasing to 0.1% in the fourth quarter, the eurozone economy is declining. When the data were made public, this also came as a pleasant surprise because the eurozone economy has managed to avoid a slump. Other external variables and falling energy prices could help Europe's economy thrive this year. The enormous Asian economy is projected to take off due to China, for instance, ending its zero-COVID policy at the beginning of 2023, which will likely raise Chinese demand and reduce supply disruptions. The openness of China is anticipated to boost the European economy this year, but other issues mean that the overall outlook for the Euro region remains gloomy. Ralph Salveen has also mentioned numerous risk factors. In his opinion, the situation in Ukraine continuing to escalate is undoubtedly the most significant. One reason for hope, in addition to somewhat lower energy prices again, is the emerging recovery in China now that the government there has ended its zero-COVID policy. However, the renewed strength of demand from China is likely to be more than neutralized by the weaker domestic economy, he added. Rainer Singer of Erste concurs that reopening the Chinese economy, which should give especially export-oriented companies a growth boost this year, is the most favorable aspect for the Eurozone growth forecast. He pointed out that significantly lower energy prices have improved industrial enterprises' competitiveness concerning foreign rivals. Softer demand from a slowing U.S. economy is on the other a slight dampening factor for the growth outlook of the Eurozone, he warned. The price growth rate is still far higher than the ECB's aim. There were widespread hopes at the end of last year and the beginning of this year that the inflation rate in the euro area would decline noticeably in 2023 and come closer to the central bank's 2% objective. The results for February were disappointingly unexpected, with inflation dropping from 8.6% to only 8.5%. The singer also anticipates that headline inflation will progressively decrease in the upcoming months due to base effects from energy costs, particularly gas, and electricity. Because base effects on energy prices are still favorable, Botchen anticipates that headline inflation in the eurozone will continue to decline. Inflationary pressures have also quite significantly abetted judging by lower input prices and delivery times and this should translate into lower core goods inflation normally in a not-too-distant future. But the pace of disinflation is sharply limited by still rising food and core inflation, she said. The economist at BNP Paribas added that the diffusion effects of past price increases are still at work. Price resets push inflation up too. Against a background of strong wages inflation, services inflation will be slow to reverse.
The imbalance between weak supply and strong demand is only slowly narrowing for now. The recovery in supply and lower demand should nonetheless help diminish price pressures more significantly in the coming months. Metsomo thinks that inflation will fall quickly because of the direct and indirect effects of the decline in gas prices. However, the path will be bumpy because governments will cut the subsidies and phase out the temporary measures introduced last year to shield households and firms, he said. Core inflation is expected to start falling from the second quarter of this year, mainly because of core manufactured goods and the stabilization of pricing and contact-intensive services, which have increased significantly since the epidemic. Metsomo stated that it is still unclear if the landing spot would be below or beyond 2%. Since November of last year, Luca Metsomo has predicted that the terminal rate will be 3.5%, with some upside risks. Recent data have not altered his prediction. To some extent, it will depend on the intensity of the transmission of monetary policy, the more the tightening of financing conditions, the lesser the need to raise rates. Second, the ECB job would also be easier if firms become concerned by the outlook for demand, if they stay bullish, they are more likely to pass on cost increases. Third, it will also depend on global demand. If demand is not subdued, then rates could rise somewhat more. The BNP Paribas analyst predicted two increases of 50 basis points each in March and May, followed by plus 25 BP in June and July, but said that the economy is proving to be more resilient than anticipated and that disinflation is significantly more sticky. The benchmark deposit rate has grown by 3 percentage points since the ECB started hiking interest rates in July last year. The Frankfurt-based bank last increased rates by 50 basis points in January, a further 50 basis point increase was anticipated for March, according to a statement. After March, the central bank has committed to deciding on interest rates based on newly available data. The central bank reduces demand by hiking interest rates to slow down activity and lessen inflationary pressures. The cost of disinflation may be substantial if the monetary policymaker over-tightens. The ECB has never raised interest rates to such an excellent level and at such a quick rate, therefore, this subject comes up today. The market began to believe that U.S. inflation had peaked and that the Fed cycle of rate increases was ending in November, which caused a shift in mood. As the U.S. labor market grew faster than anticipated and January's inflation figures underwhelmed, with disinflation slowing markedly abroad, we saw another turnaround in February. This has caused expectations of the Fed's interest rate path to be once more repriced, which has caused the dollar to rebound after two months of depreciation. The euro was not immune to the shift in market mood, nor could the bond market. The essential statistics will be released in the upcoming weeks, with the U.S. government disclosing February employment data on Friday and February inflation data the following week. These statistics will determine the market's moves over the weeks and months. Analysts were questioned about the potential effects of slower-than-anticipated deflation on European assets and what the ECB should do in such a situation. In response, Botchin said that because the Fed and the ECB are currently dealing with the same problems, the two central banks' market expectations for each rate path have been revised higher. She continued on both sides of the Atlantic, resulting in more excellent long-term rates. The net impact on the eurist at the end of the day is however unclear for me unfortunately. But assuming the eurist depreciates significantly again like in 2022, fueling imported inflation, this will argue for a more hawkish ECB. Erste Bank considers that following recent market movements, the market has adequately priced future rate increases in the US. That is all for this video. We will be back soon with another informative video. Don't forget to like and share this video. Until next time.